Oh, interesting thing I saw. I saw a post today. It said in the first five years, leading tacklers over the first five years of their career, mm-hmm. they listed the top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Keekley was number four. Bobby Wagner's number five. Uh-huh. Derek Brooks was like seven. Derek like in the Brooks first five years of their career, Levante David's on it. Uh, but we look at Keekley and Brooks. That's the interesting thing for me. Keekley and Brooks are both on it. You got McDermott and Frazier. Yeah. And they were asking, could Milano and or Edmonds end up on that list? Are you not entertained? Subscribe now! Here's the thing that I thought was very interesting. You know who's number one on that list with 737 tackles in the first five years of his career? Steve Atwater. It's a different generation of football. It was different then. It was different. I would be I would be inclined to agree with you, but he put Okoye on. <laughs> you sure did. So he could hit. I didn't have a point. I just thought it was interesting. No, but I think it's an interesting segue to talking about linebackers. Let's talk about the linebacker group because... Bob Babbage, you animal. Well, we enter the season still not knowing who the Bill Strong side linebacker is. You know what I think Bob Babbage did? What? Really well. What? He, he coached guys up. <laughs> there it is. I need Von Mosin Joseph as well. Please give me him. Yeah. Please give me a couple other linebackers. Yeah. I need Mo, Mo, Mo Alexander. Take mm-hmm. him too. Yeah, it's where Babbage come from? Do we know this? Uh, he was he actually had a, a winning college record as a head coach, like a two to one winning head coach college record. Oh boy! Pull him up. I'll pull him up. Oh boy! I, when I looked at him, he's been all over the place. Um, I'm curious if he's if his stints in the NFL were they were all short. No, but I'm saying is are they're. they're Either he's really. They were all short. So Did, was he canned with the entire staff though? If they well, were short. Here's the deal. Ready? I'll I'll give you the rundown. But you look at the organizations that he's been with, and you go like the longest tenure was he was with the Bears forever for a long time. Oh boy. But I mean, he was a what, linebacker coach for the Bears. Yeah, for like for a long time. Here, I'll give you the breakdown. Okay. Um, But the teams that he was with before, he spent a lot of time in college, came up to the pros, and then, yeah, there was a little shift. So here's the deal. Um, He was started at Tulsa as an outside linebackers coach, um, went to Wisconsin, went back to Tulsa, Bowling Green, all these are linebackers coach. Uh, Inside linebackers coach from 92 to 93 for East Carolina. Linebacker coach from 94 to 96 for Pittsburgh. He was also the special teams coach for Pittsburgh in 96. 94 to 96? Mm-hmm. They, went to the, they went to the Super Bowl 95, I believe. I believe that is right. He took a head coaching job with uh, North Dakota State from 97 to 2002. Came back to linebacker coach the Rams in 2003, which they were a tire fire in 2003, as best I recall. What? Yeah. Were they tire fire in 2003? Was that after Warner left and Mark Bulger was there? I thought that was the year. What year? 2003. Oh, no, they made the playoffs in 2003. Am I thinking four? I might be thinking 2004. Uh, you might be thinking of the Super Bowl the this year because that was a tire fire. Yeah, Warner lost the starting job to Bulger after six fumbles. Still made the playoffs. They ended up going 12-4 and four that year. And the old guy's memory is still intact. I uh, took the linebacker's coach job from t- in 2004 with the Bears. He was there as the linebacker's coach, took over as uh, defensive coordinator in 07. So he's been the, he's lost two Super Bowls as a coach, linebacker's coach. Well, here's where it gets weird, right? He was the D.C. Because they went to Chicago play against the Colts in he, 06. He was the D.C. from 2007 to 2009. Right, and then he went back to linebackers coach in 2010 when they got Fangio. Right, did they get Fangio that year? Uh, that might no, be right. Fangio was with San Francisco at that point in 2010. Yeah, 2010. I think Fangio was still there. Okay, in San Francisco, but um, 2010. Normally, you don't see a guy be a DC for three years and then go down to linebackers coach. Like that's just sort of a strange, 
sort of a strange transition. I'd like to know a little bit more about what happened there. I, I think <clears throat> either something happened that they, they, they closed the doors on with him, or they said, listen, we're either going to fire you or you take this demotion. And yeah. I think he liked having a job. Yeah. But if he was as highly touted as, you know, well, he was given a, a lot of talent. But, well, you know, let's go back. Hold on. Let's finish out his college. Let's finish out his career. 2013-2015 defensive coordinator for the Jags. So when they started building that speed linebacker group, I want you to go ahead and look at the Bills linebacker group and tell me what what do they have? Just pure speed all over the linebacker group. Again, you got to save strong say a strong side linebacker a little bit because you really don't know who's going to play there. I know Lorenzo's penciled in. I'm still very curious about how that'll play out. Um, he was the linebackers coach for the Chargers in 2016. Um, and then came with the Bills in 2017 to Kern as linebackers coach. As an NCAA head coach, his career record in postseason and in regular season is 46 and 22. Wow, which is a really good head coaching record. It is. So I don't know if he if he just he, he loves the being in the pros because with that record he's got to get have offers, which is yeah. why the demotion to DC. It's interesting. Maybe he doesn't want to go to college. He wants to stay in the pros. So he figured that if he was gone, he probably would have not gotten in the pros. But I always, uh, my brother has told me this before, and it's a very interesting point. That's a fraternity, man. If you're a coach in the NFL, yeah, you'll always be a coach in the NFL. Yeah, you, you I could, agree with that. You can get a job somewhere. Interestingly enough, though, in '95 with the Steelers and in 2006 with the uh, Bears, he was on a Super Bowl losing team. Mm-hmm. And you think a linebacker when you think of Steelers and Bears, you think linebacking core. Right. And the interesting thing that I found was that he has gone through the transition up until now. Mm-hmm. He has seen the evolution of what a linebacker has to be in the NFL. Yeah. And, and, and still coaching them. Yep. So he knows how to adjust with the times. Agreed. So you take we mentioned it before. You take a rookie linebacker, give him 121 tackles. Mm-hmm. You take a fifth round pick, make him a solid will, Pro yeah. Bowl caliber. He was going to the Pro Bowl if he didn't get hurt. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Both can play the pass as well as the run. Mm-hmm. And you take a guy who's 35 years old, <laughs> who's been a special teamer his whole career, and make him a Sam linebacker that is, and transition, transform him into a leader of your team. Yep. Are you kidding me? It's amazing, isn't it? Why is this guy not talked about more? It, yeah, he was with Love. I mean, truthfully, you take a look at, like, you could talk about what coaching tree he comes from. He spent so much time with the Bears that you have to look at Because Lovey Smith was there the whole time. So, so tell me tell me a little bit about, about Lovey Smith. Because I see that look on your face. So give, give me an education. No, I'm 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 Because going... here's the deal. We haven't done any research on any of this, right? No. I... So we're just having a football conversation. This so is tell, all... me, tell me about Lovey Smith. This is all from and, memory. And tell me from... why Lovey Smith fits into what you see the Bills doing right now. Because, again, he had stints in other organizations before, right? But he spent so much time in Chicago. Well, 95 years with Cowher. Bad bitch I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So he is off of, you know, um, he's off of the Dick LeBeau tree. Right. Which is mainly a 3-4 defense. Right. Now you look at, which is interesting, because now you look at McDermott usually runs a 4-3, oh, which is Jimmy Johnson from the Eagles a long time ago. So you look at those two schools of thought. Those are the two p- pillars of philosophy on defense. Right. 4-3 versus 3-4. Okay. Now what do you mix in? You mix in Babbage, who came from Cower, but you went to Smith, who is more a four three guy. Tampa two, yeah, Tampa two guy. Who else on this roster is a Tampa two guy? Yeah, Leslie Frazier. Frazier. Yeah, Frazier. So all day. Who was hired first? Was Fra- Frazier hired first, and then got Babbage, a Tampa two guy that's that's been through the ringer with him. So uh, the fact that Smith is is, I mean Smith has worked with Dungey. He's, he's worked with Frazier. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when... Uh, well, that's the connection, right? So you look at how do you get from... How do you get Leslie Frazier, who hadn't had any run-ins with Bob Babbage, how do you get him, right? You Lovey go through Smith. Lovey Smith. Yeah. yeah, and it's... it's 
Now, the question that arises, I know I'm not talking too much about love here. I, I don't want to say anything incorrect because my memory is a little, a little faded on him. The last memory I had was when I wanted Lovey to go, to go to Tampa or he did go to Tampa. I think Lovey ended up in Tampa. Did he? That sounds Eventually. Familiar. I think we tweeted out a long time ago when we had our podcast days that we thought he'd be a perfect fit in Tampa. Yeah. And I don't think he got the job. See, I... I think that's when Raheem Morris got it. I'll look it up. I thought Lovey Smith... Look at Lovey's... Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up right yeah. now. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, linebackers coach from 96 to 2000. Lovey Smith... Uh, Underneath Dungy. Well, okay, so let's let's just go through this, right? Lovey Smith was also St. Louis Rams from 2001 to 2003. Babbage. Chicago Bears from 2004 to 2012. Babbage. Mm -hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers from 14 to 15. Oh, he was there for two mm -hmm. years. And he's in Illinois right now. But so, I mean, people always wonder, you know, how that's do you, the fraternity. You, exactly. How do you get these connections? How does, Bob, you know, like you looked at Rick Dennison. How did Rick Dennison connect to Sean McDermott, right? And you start looking at, well, how did, um, uh, how does uh, our current uh, OC, how does Ryan Dable Hibble. connect to McDermott? Well, then they went to school together. Right, yeah, but that's what I mean is that there's yeah, the always fraternity. connection, right? Well, it's, we, it's The NFL is very much about who you know. Well, we said that it's, last year. But it's the same with trades. Like, you look at, oh, well, this team should trade this player for this player. Well, now that the two organizations don't have a relationship, like, you can look at, you can talk to, you can talk about the Bills and the Bills will trade with one of 12 teams because there's, <laughs> there's 19 other teams they're not dealing with because they don't have relationships with them because they've never traded with them before. You know, mm -hmm. like, you it's amazing how it works, but it really is about who you know. So much of football and making moves and your personnel hires and the guys that you sign via un, you know free agency, so much of it is about who you know. Here's my question. Babbage has been able to survive in the NFL. Yeah. We talk about him evolving and doing all this stuff. What's to say that the talent didn't trump his coaching? Because if you think about the 95 Steeler team, I those linebackers were insane. I think Kevin Green was there. Mm -hmm. I think Greg Lloyd was there. I think you had LeVon Kirkland. I'm pretty I'm, I'm going from memory. I'm not really sure. But you had those animals there. Yeah. Then you go to the Bears. Erlacher, Hall of Famer. Briggs, phenomenal. Yeah. Whoever they put across from those two guys was mm -hmm. going to be successful. Yep. If you look at Erlacher and Briggs, is his name Briggs? Lance Briggs? Yep. Is that his name? So... Those two were a combination that would probably be the most comparable to um, Edmonds and Milano. Mm -hmm. Because wasn't, wasn't Erlacher a, a strong safety in college? He was. At where? Arizona? Utah? Something like that? He was, uh, I, was, I don't remember. I don't know. That but was a long time ago. Point being is this. You looked at the Steelers and you looked at the Bears, the two teams where he was able to go to the Super Bowl. You can name probably three out of the four linebackers. Yeah. One was in a 3-4, one was in a 4-3. Right. So he has experience coaching both of those guys. Do you remember any of the linebackers from St. Louis when they were horrible? Of course not. No. Course so not. why could he work that magic with Hall of Fame players and not work it with... <laughs> so you're saying that Babbage is a product of the players he was given? Because I disagree with that. No, no, I'm He's I'm just putting it out there because it's a discussion point. I mean, it could. It's I could see somebody standing on that argument. I think I think it's. An I'm not. I'm just bringing it up. No, no, no. I think it's an argu I think it's a fair argument to be made. The counter to that is you, you're not a linebackers coach in the NFL for like 18 years. True. You know, True. if you're if you're garbage. Well, I mean, you're, just, you're gone. The, the counter to that could be was he living off the previous stints that he had. Nah, he was in Chicago for way too long, man. The only reason he was out of Chicago was when Tressman got hired. My question is this. Another one. Follow up. Mm -hmm. I'm flying through this today. Do you know how when we were talking about Ed Oliver at pre-draft? Yeah. You said he's he's appealing to both 3-4 and 4-3 Yeah, teams, absolutely. Which means he'll get drafted. He could go. He can yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, he could go anywhere. Does Babbage's value is his, is his value increased because he, he's, he's come from now three different schools of defense that he can coach any linebackers in any defense? Yeah. He's from the Tampa 2. Mm -hmm. He's from the 3-4. He's from the 4-3. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, Tampa 2 is like another variation of that. But the point being is this. You're starting to see. Well, and, and it, you know, a fair point to be made is that his son's also the safeties coach. So, 
I, I think there's a transition of information. There's a little bit of osmosis going on there, right, with a transfer of information because, um, you know, we talk about the safety play in Buffalo. I mean, it's a strength for the defense. And you, and you think it's an accident that the safety's dropping the box? To play linebacker? That's what I mean. Oh. Yeah, it's, the communication there has to be so good between the safety, the safety and linebacker group. Those guys have to. The communication has to be so good uh, between those two rooms. It has to be. And I mean, father son combinations can be dangerous, right? They 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 can be dangerous. On the other hand, you know, you, he also develops a really fascinating talent, like Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan. Right, like together, the Shulas, the Shulas. Yeah, that's a. Together, they're very dynamic. Separate, not always so much. Right. Yeah. Like I like Mike Shannon as an OC in Atlanta, or Kyle Shannon. I like Kyle Shannon as an OC in Atlanta. Yep. Head coach, we don't know yet. Right. It's a little tough to tell. Said quarterback carousel. It's hard to grow up in that if you were interested in it and not be well versed and not understand it right there's yeah. so many things that you just that are just become just become basic knowledge for your daily function well it's, it's a little different too if you have that knowledge transferring that knowledge is where the great coaches are separate mm -hmm. can you transfer that knowledge can you read your players enough to say listen I, you're not just a X's and O's guy you're a motivator you have to read people you, I, can he read people like his father did well hold on I, let's back up because I just had an epiphany for a second alright so the Bills go ahead, and, and now you have Babbage in the room, and Babbage is saying, okay, listen, this is the type of player that you're asking me for, right? Here are the five guys that I think, you know, need to be coached up a little bit, but you'll be able to snag later in the draft. Work with scouting. These are the five guys that are going to fall outside of the top three, four rounds. These are, we went back, we looked at them. These are the guys that I think we can coach up. From a from a, a just a purely film standpoint, right? That's where you end up with Voshan Joseph. That's where you end up with the you know with these guys, um, with um, Terrell Dotson if he ever plays. Um, you know that's where you end up with some mm -hmm. of this stuff, right? Okay. Is it a is it also a is it a coincidence that they also drafted a safety who's in in the box nickel safety? No, it's not. No, it's not. Like it's of of. Of course. <laughs> of course they picked the safety who could play nickel linebacker. It's a brief history, but it explains a little bit some of the thought process behind what they're doing. And I think that's important to know. How big is Joseph? Boshan? Yeah. 6'3"? 6'2". I think he's 6'2". Is he fast? Is he yeah, I think he's fast. He's really fast. Yeah. I think he, I think he was a 4'5 guy. Okay. So... You just mentioned a safety that can play in the box. Mm -hmm. What about a linebacker that can play safety? Okay, Voshan Joseph, 6'1". I was close. Okay. 6'1". To what? 230. <laughs> <laughs> what did we say about all the, the, the secondary players? They're always 6'1", 200, 210 mm -hmm. around there. Yeah. One, 190 to 210. Yep. That's the deal. Not in the first year, but the second year, you can start cutting weight off some of these guys. Uh -huh. What you right. said, Voshan Joseph would be used more in a pass rusher role. Maybe they'll put weight on him and move him down. Right. So, what's to stop them from playing him at a linebacker position and shifting the nickel? Yeah, nothing stops that. You know, it's nothing stops that. The communicate. I think we found the connection between the safeties and the, and the linebackers, mm -hmm. the cornerbacks and the, and, and the linebackers, because the communication we saw last year wasn't as bad as it was when remember when Ryan was here yeah like you guys in the snap with their oh, heads they had no turned. idea what they were doing no it was and, awful um, it was absolutely awful so that could have been wow that's that's such an amazing thing to find out it is fascinating right because you could start looking across the defense more and, and while we look at this defense and we say okay you know it's a lot of returning players yeah it is a lot of returning players but you still don't we still don't know how this team's going to approach replacing talent once talent comes up right we just assume the bills are going to resign milano we just assume they're going to extend trey we just assume that all this stuff is going to happen but the truth is we don't really know right we don't know mm -hmm. how this organization is going to handle it because they do seem like they're willing to coach up players but I think the most, policies, man. right i think the most important part of that is understanding what you what your limitations are 
right? Babbage has been around long enough to know what his limitations are with working with a group of linebackers, yeah. right? And if he's been able to translate that to his son who's working with the safeties, who's had a pretty easy job <laughs> the last couple of years. They, they haven't really gone out on any limbs for a safety. Could have uh, been, could have been, because they weren't highly drafted. No, 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 no. And they were cast offs of other teams. They Maybe were. they put them together and said, listen, we have the perfect role for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That bitch's kids going to be working with y'all. <laughs> and now they're amazing. Yeah, right. But I, I think it's fascinating how, to understand how the wheel turns, because it does start making some of these things make sense. And just as long as Babbage is there, now we're starting to get an outline or a silhouette of what kind of player they're going to target later in the draft, right? Or what kind of player they're going to target in UDFAs for, for these positions. I, I That's exciting to me. I like it. You just hit the nail on the head. What player do they covet? in the secondary and or linebacking court is one that you don't know where he's going to be. Right. Yep. Where's he going to be? We drop hide and pour it out in the box. Okay, they're playing linebacker now? Uh -huh. In this, oh, they dropped it down to nickel? Uh -huh. They drop, hide drives down to, to, or Poyer drops down to linebacker, Joseph goes to the defensive end. Right, or, exactly. Joseph pops back. It's, it's a point where you could drop to nickel without having to make a personnel change. That's dangerous. That is dangerous in the NFL. If you can drop, to, if you can go to nickel without having to make a personnel change. I figured it out. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> Put a stamp on this episode. <laughs> <laughs>